Hello, today my presentation is from TCTAP 2025 on optimizing procedural workflow in tricuspid tier and TTBR, the value of floral, echo MPL, and 3D ice. Here are my disclosures. So in terms of the Abbott TriClip G4 system for T tier, you can see that the maneuver of the device is a bit different from Mitro. You can see the anterior posterior is based on the transgastric view here. And you can see the septal lateral is the exactly perpendicular. There's also the knob has changed from the CDS to the SCG. So you can see that the guy has more maneuverability in terms of avoiding septal hugger, in terms of more steerability. And you can see the basic maneuvers uh, outlined here. But before doing the actual procedure, we like to optimize the patient at least 24 hours before, uh, at least in terms of initiating IV diuresis to get the patient uvolemic. You may also consider the patient IV inotropic support uh, in terms of the right ventricle. This is particularly important for TTBR. And we might even do transparency echo to assess the tricuspid anatomy, TR severity, and co-optation gap. In terms of procedure, before we actually get access, we reduce the tidal volume to uh, minimize the respiratory variation. We also slow down the heart rate as much as possible to facility grasping and leaflet capture. We may put an arterial line pressure back under the right shoulder and inflate it to tilt the patient to optimize the imaging quality. And finally, we might even need to give intravenous IV diuretics to reduce the gap, especially when the procedure start to get long. Let me show you a representative case uh, of T-tier. You can see 87-year-old female, high risk for surgery and with severe TR. And you can see that here, we first by doing a sweep on the RV inflow X-plane to grasping view. You can see this is anterior septal because it's close to the uh, aortic valve here. And then following, you sweep towards the center of the valve, looking at the gap anatomy and the TR jet, and then you sweep laterally to the posterior septal. Transgastric view is extremely important in T tier and also TTBR. We can see that this is important to delay the morphology in terms of whether it's tricuspid valve or four or five leaflets. And also, this will help you later on to orient the clip. Now, 3D MPR is becoming increasingly critical in transcaster tricuspid interventions. The reason being that at the same time, you can see four different views the 3D on false view, the blue box shows you the transgastric like view. And the green box will use the inflow view, and then the red box will use the grasping view. So it's very, very helpful to get this at the same time. Now, in terms of the T tier, you can see that here the initial step involves straddling on the bicable X plane uh, and fluoroscopy. So this is very similar to a mitral clip, uh, mitral tier straddling on the left atrium. So here you can see as the clip comes out towards the right atrium, we retract this guide and once you straddle, you can then steer down towards the tricuspid valve, making sure you don't interact with the septum. Now you can see this is live uh, showing how we do echo and floor. So you can see in fluoroscopy, we advance the clip out of the guide, but we retract this uh, guide at the same time to straddle. And you can see that we do that here under echo uh, visualization as well. And then when we steer the clip to the tricuspid valve, you can see we retract the entire uh, system. So the tip of the clip is the RA, then you rotate the guy upside down. You go from a negative position to neutral on the guy to deflect the CDS towards the tricuspid valve. And the I flex to actually deflect away from the septum towards the tricuspid annulus. This is all done uh, on echo, on bicable explain to reverse four chamber view to wash out the clip. Uh, making sure to avoid a septal interaction. But at the same time, fluoroscopically, it's very important to do that uh, as well to see how it flexes down. So here's how it looks. You can see we went from a negative to neutral on the guy, and you can see it's already flexing down uh, towards the tricuspid annulus uh, at the same time under floral and echo. In terms of optimizing the clip trajectory, if you want to go more central AS, uh, you retract the stabilizer of the system. If you want to go more mid, the comment show you advance the stabilizer. To correct the septal hugger, typically use the L knob, lateral deflection, and then clock the guide to a septal again to stand up the clip. You combine the above maneuvers uh, repeatedly with F knob to optimize the trajectory. Now, the F knob is similar, similar to the M knob on mitral clip system. The F knob, if you overdo it, you may actually end up having more lateral dive. If you don't do it enough, you may end up going for a septal dive. So you have to 
make sure uh, you are perpendicular to the grasping view and fluoroscopy can be very helpful. So here you go, you can see that on the uh, left-hand side of the uh, image, you can see the RV inflow view, the clip is perpendicular to the gra uh, grasping view. You can see that here, the uh, clip trajectory looks very favorable and it's perpendicular to the tricuspid annulus. And on the transgastric on the right side, you see the clip orientation uh, being optimized uh, once you cross. So you can see that if you have trouble with TEE, you can actually use 3 d ice with the same workflow and working view. So if you cannot see the uh, images very well in echo, and for a TEE, we immediately switch to ice and you can actually see, we can even check the gripper orientation uh, and position on uh, 3D ice. Now, once you're ready to grasp, you can see we go into the ventricle uh, with the clip closed so you don't get stuck. And once you're in the right ventricle, you open the clip. And if you have trouble visualizing the leaflets uh, in terms of insertion and grasping, then we immediately switch to a 3D ice. So you have the same workflow, same grasping view, and you can uh, maximize the, the procedural efficiency. Once in the ventricle, of course, you want to make sure before you grasp, you orient the clip properly. So we do try to use the transgastric view for that. But if you're not able to, you can use the 3D eyes with the NPR to do that at the same time. So this is what I meant. So you can use TE or eyes doing this. So the green box shows the RV inflow view, like your, uh, check your trajectory. Your red box shows the grasping view with the leaflets. And your blue box shows the orientation, the clip, and the transgastric view. So you can, at the same time, optimize the orientation, your grasping, and leaflet insertion and confirmation. Now, here you can see on 3D eyes exactly showing the same workflow. Green box showing the inflow view, red box showing the grasping view, and the blue box showing the orientation, the clip, and the transgastric orientation. So you do all three things at the same time to optimize the grasping to avoid a side bite and also to confirm insertion at the same time. The fluoroscopy is also very important in my mind for a tricuspid tear because you can see how the clip may be misrotated uh, if you uh, go into the ventricle and see parallax on the clip. You can also see the trajectory where septal dive will be more above, lateral dive will be more below. This is again very similar to the mitral clip workflow uh, where you might see dive on one side or the other on fluoroscopy. Now, when you come up to, to grass, you want to make sure the clip orientation stays the same. So you want to avoid any parallax on the uh, clip itself when you come up to grass. So you want to check that on fluoroscopy in addition to echo or ice. So here you go, once you grass, you want to be able to confirm that you have leaflet insertion, but also TR reduction, as you see here. And then you also want to confirm the transgastric view that you have a double orifice and TR reduction as well. So very important to avoid a side bite. So once you deploy the clip, you want to have multimodality evaluation. So this is transgastric view after deployment. Of course, you have the inflow view here as well. Now, this paper come from the St. Francis group recently showed the streamlined imaging and procedural workflow for tricuspid tear. I encourage you to uh, read that because it's very helpful, just like what I described earlier, to streamline the workflow of this procedure to make it more reproducible. Now, in terms of the TTBR procedure, the EVOC system is approved both in Europe and US. You can see there are four different sizes, and you can see this is a both echo flow guided procedure. On the fluoroscopy standpoint, you can see how exposed and flip the anchors, but more importantly, you can see the trajectory of the catheter and be able to show a certain trajectory and tilt and orientation. And you can see the valve being deployed here uh, under fluoroscopy. And this is the final result on the uh, parallax free view and the aerial projection and the LAO projection. Now on echo, this is done via 3D MPL on TEE. You can see this is extremely important to look at the trajectory on the gain, on the green box will be the inflow view, on the red box will be the kind of the grasping view, the uh, perpendicular view on the septal lateral uh, orientation. And you can see the blue box is the transgastric view showing all nine anchors. You want to confirm leaflet in, uh, capture of all nine anchors here in this view before you uh, commit the deployment. And you can see that here, once leaflet capture, you can see that very nicely on all three views. And then you can uh, be confident to deploy as well under fluoroscopy.
Now, there's a question of which femoral axis is appropriate. Most of the time, it's the right uh, femoral axis because you can see it's close to tricuspid valve. You have less of a uh, device extension, so you can more support for the device. However, uh, sometimes the IVC to the tricuspid annulus can be quite close, so you may uh, have to gain height and may uh, risk running out of room. In those situations, having a left run access is very helpful in terms of gain height, and you can see you can have more runway to be able to do the grasp of on the tricuspid leaflets, or in the case of TTVR, be able to avoid uh, any kind of uh, gaining height uh, situation. So in terms of the book system, you can see that here, there's a state-of-the-art review uh, published looking at the echocardiographic view and step-by-step -step on how to do the 3D MPL to guide implantation. We've also, our group uh, recently published uh, in terms of the TTBL in terms of challenging scenarios, especially with some optimal imaging or with using uh, dedicated uh, 3D intracardiac echo to help with guidance and deployment, especially in situations where you have multiple CIT leads or in terms of previous uh, tricuspid tier devices. So in summary, triclip G4T tier system and also the evoke TTBR systems are game changer in transcatheter treatment of severe TR. A combination of TEE, 3D eyes, 3D MPL, and fluoroscopy really make the procedure workflow reproducible, safe and efficient, similar really much to the mitral tier system and procedure. 3D eyes is really complementary to TEE to confirm leaflet insertion in challenging imaging and anatomic situations. And 3D eyes alone actually can facilitate leaflet grasping in T-tier and also leaflet capture in TTVL to avoid single leaflet device attachment or SLDA or missed leaflet anchor. So this provides additional safety net uh, to avoid any kind of procedural complication with tricuspid intervention. So on that note, I'd like to uh, thank you very much for your attention and don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel where I actually have additional lectures and videos, uh, especially on whiteboard lectures talking about transcaptor tricuspid, about imaging and workflow, but also more importantly, uh, mirroring with mitral tier and tricuspid tier in terms of the uh, imaging workflow so you can learn both at the same time and also standardize the workflow for both procedures. Thank you very much for your attention.